KFAC. In the studio, it is, and I didn't realize he's going to be in the studio, the one and only um, George Flaggs, mayor of Vicksburg, Mississippi. Good morning, my friend. How are well, you? Good morning, my friend. How are you doing? Uh, day by day, day by day. How are you? It, was it was it storming on the way in? This oh, absolutely. But it was it was worth the it was worth the drive to sit in your seat. Man, I'm you today, so I'm George Flag, uh, yeah. producer yeah. of Super Talk. Well, no host of uh, host of the program. We can have you in any morning that you'd like to come in and uh, and uh, set in for it. I need a second job. Hours. I need a second job. How much I pay? Um, you get a coupon. You get a coupon. A nice coupon, though. It's a good one. It's a, you can. It's redeemable at several different locations. So, let me ask you this: It's not redeemable for medical marijuana, but I understand that you guys uh, gave the okay for the sale of uh, medical marijuana. Tell, tell me a little bit about that, Mayor. Not not so fast. What we said mm. is that we was not going to opt out at this time, and we were going to be open for business in the city of Vicksburg for the medical marijuana uh, because we hadn't voted on it yet, but we just talked about it. We believe that uh, uh, the bill that it was written is a good bill. I think yeah. uh, it's a safe bill, and I think that when the Department of Health uh, writes its regulation, I think they can write some good regulation, and we can uh, change our ordinance to... Uh, uh, abide by those and, and, and work well. I've already had at least three uh, groups of people come in my office and uh, mm-hmm. interested in uh, the distribution of it or the cultivation of it. Uh, the cultivation is going to be, be tough in Vicksburg because we don't have land, uh, but the county may do it, uh, but we certainly want to be able to uh, put it in a retail area for distribution. I'm a little confused now because you when you met with these people, you said you might, you might, you might not be able to. One way or the other, we haven't voted no, no, yet. No, 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 so. no, no, no. I told them that we have every intention of doing it. We just mm-hmm. hadn't taken a vote on it yet because uh, I'm waiting to see what the regulation looked like. But, but, but all uh, look, we are in for sure because what, it just what, makes what sense. regulation? What regulations that you do not have other than your own zoning stuff that you? No, no, no. The the Department of Health. Uh, by May 3rd, I think, has mm-hmm. to produce some regulation as to h- what you can sell how, uh, and some other things. Uh, that's in the legislation, and uh, I'm waiting on it. But uh, we may just go ahead and vote uh, in the next couple uh, weeks. But, but, to, but you're uh, still confusing me because all of the amounts and everything are already stipulated within the confines of the language of the law. Well, we want to make certain that any regulation that the Department of Health uh, not conflict to what our order. For mm-hmm. instance, right now it says there's 1,500 uh, feet from a church, and and yeah. uh, there's some concern about uh, if you get a waiver for 700. We want this all this clarified, and then we want the ideal model of piece of I legislation and an and the ideal ordinance for the city of Vicksburg. That's what we do. So what you're basically saying is after May 3rd, then the board will vote one way or the other. Absolutely, or before. Oh, we, but we end by all means. Uh, we believe that it's an opportunity for us to generate uh, some revenues. We think it's an opportunity for us to mm-hmm. get a, uh, another uh, product out there that will uh, help people uh, live longer and feel good about life. In a city like Vicksburg, it's a little bit different when you make that decision, isn't it? Because... It's a tourism town. Um, you're coming from a different state who have different laws. So people will be coming across the bridge. You have casinos there. You have the Corps of Engineers. There's just a there in the visitors to the to the park. There's just a, a a lot of different chemistry that goes on to making that decision there than in a, a, in let's just say Lamar County or some other place like that. Absolutely, you're right, and that's the reason why we want to go slow and we want to do it mm-hmm. right. But by all means, Paul, we want it. I understand. What do you think the revenue is going to be? I don't know. Uh, I think they they in the county in which, like you just said, the strive mm-hmm. tourism people coming in off the river boats. Uh, people come in by way of the west part of the uh, state, and I'm told that Louisiana have a weaker law. Uh, I think we're gonna do well in Vicksburg, Mississippi. I, I'm all about the business of making certain that we utilize every opportunity uh, to raise money and not raise taxes. Do you think your police department is big enough to handle that? Absolutely. Let me go to another thing here because we have limited time, and I want to make sure we get all of this in. 
you 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 uh, heard the 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 law and read the law and everything else as far as eminent domain. You guys were kind of square into this one as far as the port expansion and uh, the move to put a solid eminent domain or uh, make sure that law was solidified. How did it affect you, and, and how, or does it affect you going forward with but your I don't, plans? I don't think it affects us. I think what the lawsuit simply did is codify uh, the Constitution as was been interpreted about mm-hmm. eminent domain. That simply means, in my opinion, that the public a public body cannot take land and give it to a private use or private developer. Uh, but if you take it for the purpose of uh, public use, like a levy, like a port, like a bridge, uh, and those things that's in the best interest of your public, then you can do it. I have, I have no problem with it. Okay. What, what's the status of, uh, of you acquiring that land and, and, and the next stage of the port? We're, we're still in the court system and I think we have a hearing coming up. The court system for what, that eminent domain? Yes, in the county court of Vicksburg. But you don't think this new law in the state of Mississippi is going to affect that one way or the other? Of course, I'm not a lawyer, but I don't think so. I think the law simply says that Mm -hmm. uh, public uh, entity, I mean, government could not take uh, private land and give it to uh, private use or private developer, and and uh, we oh, had, we ran into that when we was in the legislature with the Nissan plant. That's the reason why there was a property uh, in uh, Madison we was never able to take uh, because of the fact uh, what they said. But uh, we're building a multi-modem port. Uh, we building a levy. We building what we think that uh, will be in the best interest of the public and public use mm-hmm. uh, in the city of Vicksburg and the best use for the taxes. Pay you up. got your you got your funding lined up for that. Uh, we lining it up. The legislature been good to us. Uh, we uh, the legislature, as I understand it, uh, put some money in areas for site improvement. We think we qualify for some of that money. We will put up some of our own money. Uh, we put up a million of our own money. The legislature has given us money for the st- for the design for the environmental study and everything. I think mm-hmm. the legislature, the governor, the, the speaker, and the lieutenant governor is all on board and believing that this can be the biggest port in the, in the state of Mississippi and can create more jobs in the state of Mississippi than any other port in the state. How, how long is this thing going to take to, to be completed if you get started on it? Well, I don't know. It depends on the design. It depends on the levy. Yeah. It depends on how fast the Corps of Engineers can give our permit. And we're in the process of trying to get the permits. And we're, in the, we are simultaneously uh, in the courts and at the same, trying to get the land acquisition uh, and then at the same time get the permit. I think we're on a fast track. I think we're on a good track to be competitive for the next big jobs that are coming to this state. We miss one, and we don't want to miss the next one. I was going to ask you: Have you talked to some of the potential clients or customers for that, uh, or people who would inhabit, who would uh, t- uh, be part of the buildings over there, or well, part of I, the, the job creators? Well, it is our hope that uh, when Energy rebuild its plant uh, on that site, uh, Bassel Wilson, that it will be its plant on that site. That's one. That the other ones uh, is in the um, discussion with the governor's office, the mm-hmm. uh, MDA office, and the uh, Pablo Diaz, which is the executive director, uh, and I have not been privileged to that, but I, I've been privileged to know that uh, that a study from the University of Southern Mississippi said that this is the ideal site, this is the best site, uh, this is the most potential site for the, for the future of this state, and if we want to invest uh, in uh, river transportation, uh, rail transportation, and highway transportation, this is it. Would that site be uh, incapacitated during flooding the high water? or is, Absolutely is it... not. That's why we'll build a levy to protect it. I got it. I got it. Is... Is the is 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 that port going to handle different type of unloading stuff or, or products, or is it a, a deeper water? Or, how is it? How many acres are we talking about? Well, I think the port can be more what? of an industrial uh, port where you have industrial development uh, uh, there that creates jobs and job yeah. manufacturing thing. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, the port can also be used to access the river to create what we call uh, international uh, uh, port. 
uh, where we can go uh, through New Orleans, through Memphis, uh, to ca- Canada, or to the South America to do some things. I think any, this, you know, I just think we, this we got a break coming up here, but I want to. Any, anybody else looking to put another steel mill somewhere would be a good place to do it. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Another segment with the mayor of Vicksburg, George Flags. Frank Bordeaux joins us coming up at 8.05. We'll talk uh, the status of the GOP and the midterms and all that next. You go. Back with the mayor of Vicksburg, the uh, Honorable George Flags, and uh, host of the program for the next five or six seconds here. Um, There was something else I wanted to ask you about. The uh, Main Street Award is something that you got in the city of Vicksburg looking pretty good. Did you get what you wanted as far as the funds, or is that trickled down to you yet? Are you paying attention to where they are and when you get them, et cetera? Absolutely. Uh, I think the legislature was great. Uh, for the city of Vicksburg, thanks mm-hmm. to uh, Briggs Hobson, Lieutenant Governor, the Speaker, and um, <clears throat> uh, Kevin Ford and Austin Denton. Uh, I've looked at all the legislation. I think we're going to fare well. Uh, we got $3.5 million for a riverfront development. Uh, we have some money in the infrastructure bill. I do have some concern about the infrastructure bill, mm-hmm. but... I think I can make it work, and I will make a suggestion to the legislature, and that is to tie the infrastructure bill to the OPA money, and most cities use their OPA money for lost revenues and other things like human infrastructure, and they may not have the uh, the money to match uh, the money for the infrastructure. Why not allow the money to be, be the infrastructure of money, the opera money to be matched by any source of revenue that a municipality or county may have? And and that's not currently a possibility. No, it's tied directly to the opera money, yeah. uh, and because of that, it limits the uh, the amount of money you can. spend been in a sense if you don't have the uh opera funds available it's gonna hurt some poor cities and some poor right. counties uh but i think it could be worked out i've talked to uh senator hobson i talked to the governor's office and i think it could be worked out during the next round of uh uh money which will be coming in about december i'm hurt i heard let me ask you what were your reviews overall as far as the 2022 session i think the the Given the complexity of all the money that they had and around and the time they had, I think they did pretty good. Uh, I think uh, we would have fared better if we had, uh, if the legislature had worked a lot early on and set up some uh, some parameters uh, for some of this. Uh, money. Uh, I think they kind of rushed it at the end. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, at the same time, I hear some criticism about uh, uh, the the average person not involved in the spending of the money, but the average person has never been involved. The rank and file has never been involved. The conferees have always been the one. That's the reason why you have a conference uh, chair of, of the committee and two other uh, appointees. So I don't see that's fair to the process. But overall, I think they're doing great. Uh, I'm not here to criticize. Well, I put it like this. I'm not here to bite the hand that feeds yeah. me. The people are a little upset that we didn't get the initiative process done. Is that something that uh, rankles you or should that have been done? I, I'm, I'm told that there's some ongoing discussion on that, and it may be a one-day special session for that. And if so, I think it makes sense. You, you've you heard that there may be a one-day special session for yeah, that? It may be a one-day possibility of a session to address it. I think it's important. I think it's important okay. to make certain that uh, they perfect the law that is constitutional because it's the people's law. It's the law that okay. people wanted. They used it, and I think we ought to perfect it. You were following this uh, brouhaha between the House and the Senate all, all the way through, too, as far as this tax plan versus that tax plan. This uh, we're talking about the personal income tax deduction or elimination. They finally, with the help of the governor, centered on one. Your analysis of that plan or that which is now law. A tax cut or tax swap, whichever way you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, because uh, let me just say something. Um, my experience is as 
a member of the budget committee. I think it's always good to t uh, cut taxes when you can. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you take $600 million and reduce your income tax by 2%, uh, and you still have billions of dollars in your economy, there's a possibility you're going to have a surplus of another billion dollars in the next two years because of all the money that's been put in the economy uh, and the infrastructure money in the economy. You really won't know uh, was it a, whether or not it was a cut or a swap for three to five years. Yeah, and I think one of the other things, too, is, is everybody doesn't put that equation back into into that void of, what putting four to six hundred million dollars right. into the economy right. a year is going to generate an additional taxes? Absolutely. So. But but the good news is yeah. is that uh, people that file the income tax in the state of Mississippi will see mm -hmm. the income tax to reduce by six hundred million dollars. It's always good talking to you, sir. You uh, are a, vi a viable talk show host, fill in, and I appreciate it. Good. Coupons will be in the mail. And as I do all, I brought your book to read. The, uh, if the, you will leave it there, I'd like to have it's it. It's the Book of Mormons. Book of Mormons? Right. I'm I'm studying the Book of Mormon to compare the uh, the King James Version of the Bible to the sea, whether and or not they are disciplinary. We will have to say amen, amen, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs>